Hey, what's going on guys? Comic Games here. In this video, I'd like to introduce the world's fastest bitboard chess move generator by Daniel. And I'm sorry, I just can't pronounce the last name properly, so I'm not going to be even trying to do that. So it has started from a post that I've posted on talkchess.com showcasing the one plus year summer of chess programming channel and surprisingly i got a uh i got an answer i got a feedback from this guy so he so his name is daniel and he gave me a nice feedback but what is even more interesting is that he has pointed out that uh he actually written he has written uh what he claims to be the world's fastest bitboard chess move generator and in this video we're gonna test this against stockfish and to see how fast it is and uh, then uh, I'll try to share some thoughts on this project maybe so yeah actually without further ado let's actually get into testing and then we'll talk about other things so just just to kickstart with the most uh, interesting thing so uh, but yeah before we start just a, a little a little note so here is my processor it's quite pretty old slow and weak so uh, neither for stockfish nor for this world's fastest bitboard chess mode generator I'm not using the hardware instructions to uh, do the bar to, to do the pop count and things like that so it's uh, all purely a software implementation for uh, bit operations so just to bear this in mind so in case if you have a newer processor this is going to be running even faster and I believe that uh, the difference uh, on how this mode generator is faster as opposed to the one uh, in Walden in Stockfish might be uh, uh, might be even more in case if you use the original build let's say but uh the original build doesn't work for me because of having a very old processor and by the way uh i've spent the entire last night trying to compile and run it and eventually it was around 5 a.m 5 a.m in the morning when i managed to do this finally so yeah this was a bit of a tough experience not because it's so hard because probably i'm just a dump i believe that's the <laughs> that's the reason so but anyway uh yeah without further ado let's actually have a look on how of how this works so um, on the le on the right side, uh, uh, I have I've just downloaded and compiled the latest Stockfish uh, Stockfish 14, the latest build. So if we just uh, let's start uh, with the Stockfish. So I just want to say position, start, pause, and initialize the position, uh, and then I want to run the benchmark. So uh, we're gonna be using uh, like uh, one megabyte hash table. That's, uh, as far as I'm aware, that's the minimal uh, setup. Or maybe even wondering if I can run this with a zero zero, and then let's say six and the current and the perfed. Yeah, uh, I can even not use uh, yeah not not using the threads. Uh, I don't remember really which one is the hash size and which one stands for uh, the number of threads but anyway just just to make sure that these two these first two values are zeros and we have the depth of six current means uh, so make the perf for a current position for this one with the initial position of chess and here is the number of nodes being traversed pretty uh, standard stuff and here is the timing on my particular system so 1.8 seconds or uh, 8, 1876 milliseconds. And now let's try to run exactly the same position for this project. It's called Gigantua. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this properly. And this really feels like inspired by uh, Christopher Nolan's film Interstellar, they, they, where they have a, a big black hole there. It was called Gigantua, apparently. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce this properly. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, anyway. Um, here I have the version uh, compiled with a, a CLAN compiler, which was a real pain for me to install, to be honest. And all this nitty gritty modern uh, <laughs> world class best uh, tool chains are like for for a noob like me, that's really a bit <laughs> a bit too much to say at least. But anyway, uh, finally I've managed to do so, and now we can run the test and. As you can see, it's 1.3 seconds, so 1398. So it's going 
slightly faster than the stockfish but now let's try to run well and again bear in mind the fact that i have the video recording software working here it slows down the process obviously so now let's try to uh to do the same oh it's yeah, here we don't have that sort of a thing so let's say bench well actually just, just to make 100 percent sure that we are within the same territory so just clear this up run stockfish again so position start pause uh and bench uh zero zero let's now uh, go to the depth seven uh okay so the current position and perfect now it takes longer and uh by the way i didn't actually even test uh, uh with, with the depth of seven for for initial position so this might be here uh the difference might be even more significant because uh, the greater, the deeper we go, the number of nodes being traversed is growing exponentially. So, yeah, that's uh, it should be much faster for for this uh, for this Gigantua Mo generator. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm really, I'm really tempted to know this myself. Uh, yesterday, I, I I've ended up with just making it work just making it working and i was completely done after okay so 48 seconds we got the 48 seconds and let's escape from here and now here let's try depth seven and see what we get okay yeah it doesn't uh it doesn't print uh for some reason it just doesn't print this you know, uh, notes that has been traversed within a single move uh well i think this is always a good idea to print this this kind of list, but again, like I don't I don't really think this affects the speed somehow, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a downside that we don't know how far did it go so far, so we just need to wait until it's done, and then we just see uh, what would be the eventual time. And we have thirty seven seconds versus yeah. Uh, 37 seconds versus 48 seconds so it's like 10 it's around 10 seconds faster so well maybe not that significant but uh, uh, you know like uh, beating stockfish in terms of uh, providing a faster mood generator I think this is really really cool thing to consider okay so uh, if we start talking about how on earth this works uh, I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I have no, I have no idea because for me it's kind of like a complete rocket science. When I see, when I uh, when I had a look at the source code of this engine, uh, I felt like I've never written a single chess engine before and didn't ever make a single tutorial on that as well. So yeah, uh, it's really, uh, you know, like if you want to feel stupid, you just have a look at the source code and most likely you'll feel, you, you will feel exactly the same way how I did. But fortunately, uh, Daniel has provided this article on, co on codeproject.com where he's trying to explain uh, uh, kind of like why his engine is faster than Stockfish, right? And why is this, why is it so fast? So, well, uh, the first the first few uh, the first few pieces of text are pretty easy to understand because uh, they they kind of covering the general theory behind bitboards so how the how bitboards operate so like the general techniques but then uh, a real rocket a real rocket science starts well this for me that's the total rocket science so somehow he's using uh so-called check masks and pins okay and the pin masks as well which uh in theory and in practice as well as actually allows to minimize the number of um, uh, mi minimize the time of uh, the time spent on calculations and the most um, the most uh, so uh, what I could understand out, out of this is this why is this so fast summary uh, which is really intended for noobs like me right so so he's using efficient branchless pins and checks go uh, go a long way but it won't be enough to generate the fastest mode generator of all the heavy usage of const expression castling and in peasant handling brings another three times improvement when castling is not possible there is no condition 
in the assembly anymore and the template inst uh, instantiation plus the if cons uh, cons expression total removes the cost of castling and impasin and this is this sounds very cool and I, I don't know I need to read through this uh, another hundred of times probably to understand it better right uh, but the most uh, the most significant thing here um, let me just uh, find this um, somewhere he has mentioned that he did put this uh, from the runtime uh, to the compile time. Uh, I don't know, guys. I just I just lost it. I'm sorry. Optimizations, maybe here. Um, yeah, I just uh, I, I can't find this at the moment. I'm sorry. So you you better just read read through this and hopefully get a better understanding of what's of what's going on, how it works. Uh, what I can say from my side is that. Um, it took me around I don't know I didn't count I didn't count really but I would say from 10 to 15 minutes only to compile this move generator and well probably I did something horrible wrong I have no idea I didn't use CLAN before for compilation but anyway uh, I've, I've started googling about that so by the time it was compiled and I was able to search for why uh, uh, if you have so it, it really has lots of this so-called const, uh, constant expressions in the source code probably I can uh, I can probably point to the place in the source code which results this like long compilation but I unfortunately I can't say anything uh, above uh, above on, on it so I can't I can't I can't say anything more about that so uh, here is the project right uh, here it is and here is the move gen hpp uh oh my god guys if you only knew how i hate c plus plus i just don't understand it that's the reason why i hate it so much so yeah oh uh, don't open with our studio oh man I'm sorry um yeah just once i've installed uh our studio that was uh probably the worst the worst thing ever uh i've made as a developer uh, yeah, and you just just need to remove that. So, uh, okay, now it's not the right file. Uh, what's the right file? Move list HPP move map. Oh yeah, and this huge file. Uh, okay, here is the huge file here. So, uh, to be honest, guys, I have no idea what this uh, constant expression do here, and you see like really lots of those here. So I can only imagine so it's better to read through the article many times to understand. So it's like it goes for, you see like how many lines it goes through. Can you believe this? 13,000 of these constant expressions up to here. Oh no, it's already probably some with different data. But anyway, so I have no idea how this works and what the heck is this, but you've just seen the result. And by the way, yeah, it's already finished. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, finished long time ago, I'm sorry. So yeah, uh, just just a few notes uh, for those who would be trying to compile this at home. Well, probably uh, I think I should just provide the binary executable for Linux that I made to uh, to avoid this hell of compiling this sort of a thing and inst installing CLAN was wasn't that trivial for me for me on my Linux mint as well. So uh, I've added this two lines. Uh, well. Uh, there was a big, uh, there, there was a long, uh, a long support session from Daniel uh, here in the thread. So just uh, read through the pages. Oh my God, where is that? Just read through the pages. Uh, you'll see like how, how we, how he was trying to to teach me how to make his code working. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, you know, like. When you're getting asked to med to modify someone else's code that you have no idea how it works, that's really challenging. But well, but fortunately, uh, well, surprisingly, I was smart enough to to eventually complete that. So uh, these two lines emulate uh, this macros uh, to replace the hardware instructions that I that are not supported by my processor. So in your case, this might be different, basically, or well. 
Uh, I just I, I can't say you so, so this is the territory I'm complete noob in so I just can't tell you much about it but the idea is just to compensate the lack of the characters uh, the lack of um, uh, the lack of instructions that uh, your processor potentially may not be supporting and again like uh, uh, when you have those instructions it would be really kind of um, working better basically and also somewhere in the code I don't even remember where now so yeah just you, you really need to read through, through this sort of a thing to walk through all the uh, okay where is that so I need to replace oh my god where is that e yeah I need to get rid of this one and replace it with yeah with this one so yeah, it's my summary of what, I've tr of what I've tried. Yeah, and it was still lots of errors. Yeah, and then eventually just replace this this two macros. I didn't need to replace this one, even though it's been mentioned here. So yeah, um, so I would just rather try to share my own uh, binary executable. And there is a, a release, including both Linux and Windows binary executables, which uh, would be working on the modern processor supporting the BMI. Okay, so hopefully, I really hope that most of you guys would be able just to run this out right out of the box, and hopefully the article would uh, help you to better understand why this is so fast. So yeah, uh, now my mission is complete. I promised Daniel to make a video on this absolutely fascinating mode generator, so I did. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for not understanding this on my own, but again, like just bear in mind that chess programming channel is uh, made by noob for noobs, so that's that's the goal. I try to I'm trying to simplify things as much as I can, and uh, this project is completely opposite to what I'm doing here. And yeah, I'm sorry, I just can't cover it because uh, I just just too stupid to cover that. I'm sorry for that, guys. So we'll still be trying to write didactic engines instead and try to break down things and rather focusing on beginner's chess rather than the advanced ones because that's at least what I can understand. So yeah, this is it from my side guys. So thanks for watching. Until the next time and take care.